If you were given this data set and told to look up data for Tiger Woods, what formula would you use? I did say lookup, so xlookup is a great place to start. Our lookup value is Tiger Woods, and we want to find that within the athlete name column of our table. And let's return data for all of the columns I have in bold down on the right. So we can select all of that data, close parentheses, hit enter, and xlookup does support dynamic arrays, so we can get all of this data in one formula. But if we scroll down, we can see pretty quickly that Tiger Woods appears several times in the table. And a shortcoming of xlookup is it can only return one value at a time. So what if we want to return all occurrences of Tiger Woods? Instead, let's use the filter function. So let's delete our xlookup and write a filter function. And first we need an array, and this is what we are starting with before filtering. So let's select all the data from those same columns in our full table. And next we have the include argument, and this is our filter criteria. So we want to include all rows in that array we just selected where the athlete name is equal to Tiger Woods. So we can select our entire athlete name column, and it's very important that any array you use in the include argument is the same length as your initial array, otherwise you'll get an error. So we want athlete name to be equal to Tiger Woods in quotation marks because this is text data and it is also case insensitive. And then finally, we have the optional if empty argument. And this is telling Excel what to output if no rows in your initial array meet the include criteria. So it's basically acting like an if error function. So I like to at least include something like a blank or maybe not found. Now we can close parentheses hit enter, and we get this nice dynamic array of all of the instances of Tiger Woods in our table. Now, let's filter our data for these three columns here on the left based on the sport we select in this data validation dropdown list. So we can go into this cell here and write our filter function, and for the array, let's go over to our data sheet and select all rows for these three columns. Now for the include argument, we are filtering on the sport. So let's select our sport column, and we want to include all rows where the sport is equal to, if we go back to our other sheet, this cell here. If empty, let's return a blank, close parentheses, hit enter, and we filtered our data. So this just goes to show that the include array does not necessarily need to be part of your initial array. In fact, you could even put that include array in a different sheet if you wanted it to. It doesn't actually matter as long as that include array is equal in length to your initial array. And one of the many reasons why the filter function is so awesome is because it outputs a dynamic array signaled by that blue outline. And the beauty of this is that when you go to reference that filter output in another cell, it will update dynamically. So let's get the list of unique athletes from our filter output here on the left. And to grab only that athlete name column, we can use one of the new Office 365 functions, choose calls. And for our array, we can select the cell B5 here because this is the cell that actually has the filter function in it. Then add a hashtag to make it dynamic. Then for the column number, this is just the column index of the column we want, which is athlete name, so that's gonna be a two. And then we just want to wrap this in a unique function to get all of our unique names. Hit enter and there's our output. And so when we go to select another sport, let's say soccer, which is going to have a much longer list of filtered names, and we go back into this cell here, we can see that our array automatically expanded to the size of our filter output. And same exact concept when we select a sport, which will have a shorter list of names like hockey, go back into this cell, the array automatically contracts. So you don't have to go back into these formulas here and change the size of your array. Now that we have the basics down, we can look at some more advanced filtering, like filtering on multiple criteria. So an AND statement is represented by the asterisk, while the OR statement is represented by the plus sign. And you must use parentheses when you have more than one criterion. Let's look at some examples. First, let's show data for all athletes who made at least $100 million in any given year before 2016. So we have two criteria here. One is going to be on the earnings, and the second will be on the year. So let's write our filter function. And for this array, we want all the data in our table from athlete name and over. Now for the include argument, 
This is just personal preference, but for these filters with multiple criteria, I like to create an outline. So I know I need one criterion here, the asterisk, which is an and statement, then parentheses for that second criterion, and then if empty, just return a blank and close parentheses. And now I can go back into my parentheses here and add in my two criteria. So the first one is going to be that the earnings column is greater than or equal to 100. And then the second one here, if we go back into these parentheses, is that the year is less than 2016. And hit enter. So for question two, we have the exact same thing here, except we're adding one more criterion, and that is that the athlete is not from the USA. So we can go back into our formula here and just add that extra criterion. So another and statement, so another asterisk, and then parentheses. And then we can go into those parentheses and add that last criterion. So we'll go over to our data sheet, and we want the nationality column to be not equal to USA. And we filter that list down to only Manny Pacquiao. So this is just to show that you can, hypothetically speaking, add as many different criteria as you want. Now we have an example of the or statement. So let's show athletes who either made at least 100 million or ranked number one in earnings in that year. So the array is going to be the exact same at the beginning here. So I'm just going to paste that in. And now for the include. So we have one criterion on earnings or signaled by the plus sign here, a second criterion on the rank. And then just a blank if empty, close parentheses. And let's go in and fill in our criterion. So first we have earnings greater than or equal to 100. And second, we have the rank equal to one. Hit enter, and there is our output. For question four, let's build on question three, but this time I want soccer players only. So we are going to have to add an and criterion for the sport plus one other change, but we'll get to that in just a second. So we can go to the end of our include argument here and add an asterisk and parentheses. And in those parentheses, let's go over to our data sheet and select the sport column. And we want that to be equal to soccer. But when we look at our output here, we can see that we're not getting all soccer players. So we're not actually getting our intended output. And the reason is because of order of operations. So Excel is always going to read an AND statement before an OR statement unless you use extra parentheses. So this is reading this as rank is equal to 1 and sport is soccer or earnings is at least 100 million. We want the OR statement to be read first, so we need to wrap this in extra parentheses here and close parentheses here. And now we have fixed our formula. And moving on, the last really cool feature I want to share is the fact that just like XLOOKUP, the filter function also works horizontally. And this will allow us to create a really cool two-way filter dynamically based on what we select with these checkboxes, as well as this drop-down list. And it'll all update with conditional formatting, which I'll show you in a second. So first, let's write a horizontal filter to show the column headers based on what we select with these checkboxes. So we'll write a filter function, and the array is going to be the headers in our table. So let's go ahead and select all of these. And for include, if we go to our keys sheet, this row of true-false data, or Boolean data, these are the cell links to our checkboxes. So a true value means the checkbox is selected. False would mean it is not. And because it's already in true-false format, we don't even need to set this equal to anything. It's already ready to go for filtering. And if empty, meaning all of our boxes are unchecked, let's return a message. So we could say select a column header above. And now let's go ahead and test this out. OK, so now we're ready to move on to our data. And this is where the two-way filtering comes in. So I want to filter on both the columns based on our checkboxes and the rows based on the sport that we select here. So let's start with the horizontal filter. 
So equals filter, and our array is going to be our entire table. So the name of the table is Forbes data. And for include, we're filtering horizontally on the columns. So let's go back to our keys sheet and select those cell links to the checkboxes. And because this is the same width as our table, Excel will automatically realize this and perform a horizontal filter. So let's close parentheses and hit enter and test this out again. Okay, so this is working properly and now we can add in the second layer of our filter. So what we've basically just written here is the array to our outer filter function. So we'll add in another one here. This is our array. And now for include, we want to only return rows where the sport is equal to what we select here. So let's go back to our data sheet and we can select the sport column and we want to set that equal to the output of our dropdown. So we'll go back to our key sheet and that's going to be this cell right here. And now we can close parentheses. And the last thing I want to do is wrap this in an if error function. And the reason we're not using if empty is because if we don't have any of these checkboxes selected, you can't filter an empty array. So that's going to give you an error regardless. So to combat that, we'll use if error and return just a blank cell. Hit enter. And now let's test this out. So that is the end of the video today. The filter function is without a doubt, one of my personal favorite functions in Excel, just with everything it could do and so many use cases for it. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm gonna have a lot more of exactly these types of tutorials coming for you in the very near future. So watch out for that. If you wanna learn a little bit more about filtering, I have a tutorial on wildcard characters in Excel. Link to that one should be up in the top corner popping up now as well as down in the description below and if you want to learn more excel in general i have a full tutorial playlist on excel link to that should be popping up over in the corner as well as again links down in the description and finally if you have any more uh, ideas for topics you'd like to see me cover go ahead and leave a comment down below and as always thanks for watching